Welcome back to Own the World Place Out of the Park Baseball 21. It is time for the 1876 season. We are projected to romp. Hopefully that does come to fruition and we can right the ship after a second place finish last year. So this should be, we made some trades in the off season. So if you skip our off season videos, we can make a quick jump through there. Uh, let's see, March, I think we made the trade in February. Yes, we did. We made a huge trade. We traded John Hatfield and Charlie Paber to the Louisville Grays, getting Wes Fissler, Phony Martin, John Daly, and Lit Pike. So we basically swapped our second baseman and uh, left fielders, um, and we picked up an extra starting pitcher just in case. And uh, meh, a C-level prospect here in John Daly. Um, a infield body, basically. But Wes Fisler, um, really a better hitter and maybe a slightly better fielder. And Lit Pike, amazingly a better hitter and a better fielder than Charlie Paper. So both very exciting moves. Um, so hopefully this will pay off for us. So let's get into it. Let's play till our next game. We open at the Philadelphia Athletics. We play Philadelphia all the time. Apparently that's who we're always up against. But it's the American League Philadelphia, and it does not go well. We get shut out. 3-0. Five hits. Wes Vistler, though, picks up two after joining the club, so good for him. Then we can turn around and play at another Philadelphia. Let's see. So that's got to be the Philadelphia Whites, because they have red and yellow circles. And it is. And it's a 3-1 win, which moves us into a virtual tie for first place. Five hits. Hit ball by Ryan Walters. Very nice. Three hits for Lip Pike. Both of those guys paying off early for us. So, very good. So, who do we get next? We probably get the other Philadelphia, formerly the bad Washington Nationals. And it's an 8-7 win in 14 innings. And we get to walk that off. We had a big comeback there in the 8th. Let's see. Cap Anson, five for eight, a double, four singles, drove in three. Um, Al Pratt, apparently he goes the distance. Then Anson's the one who knocks it in. Wow, and they emptied the bench. How is there that many people left in their roster? Do we get to go to 25? I do. Okay. So, Awesome. 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, um, 24. <laughs> I guess we'll put another third baseman up. 25. Wow. We're playing with one hand tied behind our back. Not really. Not really at all. You're going to try to go to a three-man rotation. That's the only thing that's scary, but that's fine. Because so with the Boston Red Caps, you do want to go to a strict rotation. That is the one problem with this. So, okay. McNeil. But that means we have three starting pitchers and nobody else does. Then we pull out a 6-4 win. Ryan Walters, again, let's see, three hits again for Anson, 14 in total, pretty much everybody getting hits, Bellin struggling, that's nothing new. So now we play a St. Louis team, I don't even know which one that is, so that's the National League St. Louis team, so they should not be as good. They're not. It's a 9-1 win. Five runs in the first. 
and St. Louis decided, well, wow, everybody decided, everybody gets to play. <laughs> Not even going to try to make sense out of that box score. I see three hits for Hyam in there, and three for Fistler. Now we play a Philadelphia team. I think this is the Centennials. And it's a 7-0 shutout. Four-hit shutout at that. Nicely spread out. Bechtel, two hits. Anson, two hits and two RBIs. Pratt, two hits and two RBIs, plus a shutout. Now we have a break until the beginning of May. So George Knight getting a little bit better, I guess, throwing even harder. That's a plus. Bill Kuhn as a second baseman, you're just kind of picking random things. That's fine. Next game versus the Mutuals. Okay. Right, Philadelphia Whites are ahead of us by a game, but we're up on percentage. Got it. And we lose to fall a game back. And it's pretty ugly. We don't score until the bottom of the ninth, and we only get three hits. Yuck. Okay. Next game versus the Hartford Dark Blues. And it's another loss, 4 7. Why? Because you pitched Phony Martin. Okay. Next versus a St. Louis club, National League St. Louis, not good giving a starting pitcher for the game, and it is a 19 to 1 wrong. Only five hits. Hyam had five of them. Hansen had four and nine RBIs, and that is not a story. Two home runs for Anson. I think becoming the first National Leaguer to do that. Two on, two out, and two on, one out. Wow. He have yourself a day and take over the home run lead. Okay, at Philadelphia. The athletic Philadelphia. 8, 4, and 10. Nicely done. Bellin with the bases clearing double in the 10th. Nice game all around. George Knight picks up the save. Now we're at a St. Louis team, so National League St. Louis. We're playing them a lot early here this season. So, I mean, that is helping us get out in front here, but we wish we kind of had some of those later in the season. I'm giving credit to Bechtel. I mean, seeing 255, Anson again, hit an RBI walk, yeah. And then the American League St. Louis, we get to play them for the first time. And it's a 9-1 win. That one was in doubt until late. Five runs in the top of the ninth is what makes the difference. Bellin again, bases clearing double. Hey, he's getting his money's worth when he gets up there. Three hits for Hyam. Pratt the winner. Next game, home for Boston. 6-5. Who when it comes in walk-off fashion? Three in the ninth. Sack fly for Lit Pike. He's been a little on the struggle bus this year. That's not as good. Interesting. Okay. But it allows us to get out in front. That's always important. The next game is the Washington Nationals, who are not actually the Washington Nationals. I think they're probably 
will become the senators eventually. And it's a 5-7 loss. It's a 6 run eighth. That's not good. Hyam does have five hits in the game. The top of the lineup smacks everybody around, but it does not go well. Phony Martin struggles. Okay. At Cincinnati. And it's another loss, and we drop back. Yeah. Hits pretty evenly spread throughout the lineup. Well, Fistler had four, so he's on an absolute tear. Two for Anson. Now we play Cincinnati again. Another battle for first. And it does not go well. We were predicted to have a good year, but it is not going as well as we would have hoped. It's a 10-5 defeat there. Fistler with two hits, Heim with one. Next up versus Keokuk, or a half game back. 10-4 win. Get it back. Get back that tie for first place. We score runs throughout. They seem to love highlighting Bellin, who's hitting 190. Whenever he does anything good, that's pretty funny. Three hits for Fissler, Anson, and Pike. So, middle of the lineup, doing damage. Next game, Hartford Dark Blues, who are doing a lot better. Looks like the American League has finally caught up to the National League, after the National League has been pretty dominant for a while. That's an ugly loss. 5-12. Um, who ate that one? Al Pratt's the one who eats that one. So, okay. Again, St. Louis Brown stockings next. So, National League St. Louis. Or American League St. Louis. They don't have a pitcher. That's always... A good sign for us, and it is, as we win 8-1, move into a three-way tie for first. Bellin hit a home run. This is becoming the Steve Bellin show for highlights. Three hits for Hyam. It's just kind of a weird quirk we've gotten into. So next up, we the New York Mutuals, who... We're playing about 500 ball there in the middle. We've moved out in front by a half game, so hopefully we can stay there just by virtue of everybody else being not as good. And it's a 6-5 win against New York, and we walk it off. And Cassidy. Okay. We decided to go with John Cassidy, so we've switched him around and Phony Martin. Okay, you're not feeling phony, Mark. But you do love you some John Cassidy. Okay. But he can hit. So, plus. Next up versus the Hartford Dark Blues. Again, an average team. Hopefully we can steal one seven two. And we move, stay, fall into a virtual tie for first. Pratt, the winner, Anson. We decided to highlight him. He went 0 for 5. But somehow, errors did as good. Bechtel, 3 for 5, and 3 RBIs there at the top of the lineup. That's a plus for us. Next game versus the Louisville Grays. We have to go see our old friends. And we got our player development update. Pud Galvin improving. John Cassidy, we think his potential's better. So his overall drops from 3 to 1.5, but his potential jumps from 3 to 3.5. 
because all of that makes sense. But it's a 9-2 win for us with West Fistler, two triples, scored twice, drove in two. Hatfield's doing okay. He actually hit two home runs over there for Louisville. And Paper's doing well, too. I mean, I don't know. That will be an interesting one. That will be talked about for a while. Read through there. What? Apparently we had the home run derby already. With Whitey Ritterson? Okay, I'm all confused. I don't know what happened. So, at St. Louis. American League St. Louis, who's not doing very well. So hopefully plus for us, yes, 4-1 and we move out in front. And Cassidy only allowed six hits. Starting to get some good innings out of him. Nansen, two RBIs, two walks, two hits. Just doing cat pants and things. We like that. Next up, Philadelphia Whites. One of our big rivals now. And unfortunately, it stays that way as they beat us 11 5. Ooh, 7 run 6. Yeah, our ancient pitching. Well, Pratt's the one who's struggling this year. Are you having another bad Pratt year? That could be interesting. Oh, good. Now we get Jim Brett with the Athletics, who's absolutely lights out. But we take him out 9 3. 4 in the 5th and 5 in the 7th. I am four for four for RBIs. And Bellin has another big game. Because we like to highlight Bellin when he does good things. I think they've told us about every single one of his RBIs as a highlight. I think that's just comical at this point. Okay. Now we're at Boston, the Red Caps. And it's 11-5. Game and a half out front. Bechtel, four for five. Pair of doubles, scored twice. Very good. Three hits from Radcliffe as well. Time goes two for five, lowering his average. I mean, that's the hard part of hitting. 400 is, you know you got to go two for five to get there. So now it's Cincinnati. Key game at Cincinnati. Do we get it? Yes, we do. And so Cincinnati getting moved farther and farther back. Get a 7-1 win. Only four hits allowed. They decided to highlight Devlin this time. Who's... Kind of having a quiet year. Anson goes four for five with a pair of RBIs. Pratt picks up the win. Next up, the Athletics. Another good Philadelphia team. But we win 11-1, moving two and a half clear. Scoring a bunch of runs across the board. Let Pike two run double, who'd like those. And we emptied the bench. Two RBIs for Hyam. Anson had one, but he got two more walks. He's getting a lot of walks. Five RBIs for Pike. Next up, the Washington Nationals, who are leading the American League, or sort of, or kind of. I'm still confused as to how to deal with those, but we fixed that problem. We put them into second. And we win our fifth in a row on a 12-6 game. A lot of runs late, but that doesn't matter. John Cassidy has a good game, or does enough for us. Um, especially after we emptied the bench. Bechtel, three hits. Lit Pike, three hits. Couple RBIs. And Cassidy's 4-0. 
Next up, Philadelphia. White. So this is the better Philadelphia team. That's a 4-0 win. Win streak reaches six. It's a six hitter for Al Pratt, who's finally getting it back on track. And it's a four hit day for Fissler. He drives in two of the four runs. Hyam does fall off the pace, though, um, an average. So St. Louis Red Stockings. And it's 11-2. We like those. Again, a nice scattering of runs. They're highlighting Jim Devlin. Okay, two for five. She did score four runs, so that's really good. Anson has an over five. Hyam goes three for six, so that raises his average. Bechtel has a three for six as well. And Wolters has a three for five as the pitcher. And Wolters goes to eight and two. Next up, the New York Mutuals, who are just rolling along at 500. But it's eight in a row. And I'm excited to give Phony Martin a start. You're just, you just can't figure out who that third starter should be, can you? He decided to switch back. Even though John Cassidy was crushing it. Okay, now we're playing the Louisville Gray, so this must have been the old Brooklyn team, right? Yeah, this was Brooklyn. Somehow our rivals have fallen off. Ooh, man, they're below some of the expansion teams. And it's 8-4. Yeah, nine in a row for us. That is good. 16 hits. Everybody gets one. Only Hyam and Anson get a single hit. A pair of RBIs, though, for Anson. Pratt moves to eight and four. And next up, a Philadelphia game against the Athletics, who are now in first place in the American League. But it's seven on one, and we have a 10 game winning streak, and we are. And we are rolling. I like this a lot. Uh, let's see. Anson, another two walk. Game. He has a lot of walks this year. He has 12 already. Early, about a third of the way through the season. Uh, let's see. I guess we're giving Hyam the day off, and, but Hodes does his job. Bellin really struggling out in center. We're going to need to solve that center field issue at some point. Philadelphia Whites, can we make it 11 in a row? And we do in an emphatic fashion, 17-6. Scoring pretty much across the board. Well, I'm excited to highlight Henry Austin, 2 for 2 with 2 singles and 2 RBIs. I don't even think he started the game. Start, we threw everybody else out there. Yeah, Austin was a pinch hitter for Bellin, who already had two hits. Um, Anson picks up three RBIs, as does Fistler. And Phony Martin gets the win. Next up, Hartford. who have not announced a starting pitcher, so we like those odds, and we do. We roll to uh, make our winning streak 12 games with a 12-run game. And Cap Anson goes 4 for 5 with a home run, a double, two singles, and another walk. Scored 2 and drove in 3. So, Anson having a nice year. All by himself for the home run lead, and he's grabbed RBIs. Wow. And Hyam's got average. Next up, Keokuk. We take the Westerns on. 
in an 8-7 game to go 13 in a row. We are running away with this. Well, that was not as close. They were giving Devlin the credit with a triple. Drove in four and scored once. Nice. And you did pull Burdock, or you pulled Walters to go to Cassidy. Cassidy comes in and has a nice four inning relief appearance. Okay, next up Cincinnati Reds, second place team, putting their 13 game win streak on the line. And that's where it ends. 10 7, seven runs in the first. Ooh. Three for five for Anson, but it's not enough. And he moves to 373 on the year. It's Phony Martin. Okay, double header versus a Philadelphia team. Versus the Centennials. So hopefully we can sweep both of these. We should. And we do. 16-2 and 2 nothing. Glad we used up all those hits. Seven run lead. Oh, Anson again. Three for five. Home run, a double. Scoring three. Driving in five. Yep. Yeah, those are the days that we dream of. Four for five for Radcliffe. Bellin just absolutely on the struggle bus out there. Hitting 193. Ouch. Anson up to 380. And 2-0 win. Six hitter. Uh, Ryan Walters. 10-2 and two on the year. Fissler. Three hits. Two for Pike. But it's Bellin and Walters who drive people in. Okay, we're well, we're back on our to our winning ways. Next up, the Brown Stockings, the American League team. They are not a very good team. They didn't even bother to announce the starting pitcher. And for good reason. It goes 16 to 1. 16 hits, we get a five hitter out of Phony Martin. Who was a born in New York, which was apparently a part of this. Um, I mean, we empty the bench again. Lots of hits. Anything else stand out in there? I don't think so. Next up, the Cincinnati Reds again. Just keep, see if we can keep stretching this lead. We're 32-9. and nine. We're almost at the halfway point. Oh, they beat us bad, 19 to 1. Hopefully, it's not because we've been crushing the bad team. So, our old friend Jacob Doyle, maybe we can give a check on him. I say old friend, he's 20. He's in his fifth season in the major leagues. Um, really not. I'm known for the bat. Good defensive second baseman, but not known for the bat. And Mike Golden. Very promising young pitcher. Yeah. Not even sure what to say about that mess. Well, it's Cincinnati again. Hopefully we can recover. Player development. Charlie Waite. Got it. And that's a loss. John Clapp has a good game for them. Jacob Doyle, they highlight again. Um, yeah, Lip Pike gets a pair of hits. Hyam's been struggling. He's down to 397. St. Louis. Good. We get to beat up on a bad team. But that does not happen as we lose 3-1. to one. We seem to be struggling. Because that is a three-game losing streak. And our lead is down to four and a half. So, coming up, we have one more game before the All-Star break here against the New York Mutuals. Let's see if we can write this. 
as we go into the all-star break. So with the rosters going to 25, there may be a lot more all-stars. Most popular star. Highest vote getter, Dick Hyam. Nice! And we do win that game against the Mutuals going in. It's a 10-7 affair. Um, or Hyam Devlin. What, three hits for Fissler, Hyam, Anson? So Hyam... He is hitting 394 going into the All-Star break. And so I guess we should look at the fan voting this go around. Hyam, 223,000. That is a lot. Devlin does not make it. Fissler does at second. Anson at third. Nobody at short. Lip Pike, third and left. Yeah, he was not going to get it. Back don't finish it. It's in the Pretty close second and right and pitcher. Then you say to go Dick McBride, Al Pratt. So who actually makes the team for us? Al Pratt makes it 11 and 5. Not as good as we'd hoped, but still giving us some. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. I was misreading something. He started 48 last year. That's what the deal is. Um, and John Cassidy made it. That's very good for him as a rookie. Uh, I wish he was getting more starts, but I guess we'll live with that. I am having a very nice first half of the season. Getting 394. On pace for a 4 win season. Um, Everett Mills, one of our former players, gets in at first. Wes Fissler, who we made the trade for, having a very nice season, hitting 353. Um, he has rebounded very well um, since joining us. So that is a steal. Steal, steal, steal. Cap Anson having, again, a great season on pace for a five-win season. He's got four homers already, tying his career high. Don't forget, he's just 24. He's just hitting his prime. Uh, let's see, anybody else? Yeah, we didn't get any outfielders. Charlie Paver is having a good year. So hopefully we've got the, the guns to be able to play this. So it's home run challenge today. Who gets it? Cap Anson! Oh yeah! Topping John Bass, 1817. End the All Star game. And Mike Golden leads us to a win. Let's see that box score. It's a 4 3 game. And there's a lot of issues going on there. Wow. Okay. So, all-star break, we're up four and a half. Um, we think it could have been higher, but we'll take it. Everybody seems to be doing pretty well. So, we'll see you in the next one, and hopefully we can hang on as we go for the title. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!